Hello, everyone. Welcome to Google Cloud Next 24, and welcome to this session. In today's session, we'll be talking about BigQuery Omni and Looker, and how it will help overcome your data silos and help you do cross-cloud analytics better. As a quick intro, I'm Vidya Shanmugam. I'm a product lead in BigQuery. And my name's Adam Wilson. I'm a group product manager for Looker. I'm going to join back up about halfway through to talk about the Looker side, and Vidya is going to kick it off talking about BigQuery. Vidya. Thank you, Adam. Before we jump in, let's take a quick look at what we're going to be covering here today. So first of all, we'll talk about why should you really care about uh, this session? What are some of the cross-cloud and multi-cloud challenges we hear from our customers? Then we'll deep, do a deep dive in BigQuery Omni and talk about some of the recent capabilities that we have launched. Then I'll pass it on to Adam, whom you just saw up here, to deep dive into the Looker platform, talk about some of the key benefits and some of the new features they've launched as well. And we'll bring it all together with a cool demo on Looker and Omni, helping showcase what you can do with consolidated data and all the scenarios of power for you. So let's jump in. Let's talk about some data here. Over the past decade, we've seen a strong proliferation in data, whether it's data volume, data types, there's just been too much growth there. If you think about the data that's generated from several applications with all of the Gen AI applications, AI ML apps, traditional systems, streaming, BI, the list goes on. The amount of data that you generate from applications is consistently growing. With that, this is stored across different storage systems, whether it's object stores, whether it's traditional data warehouses, relational databases, the storage types are many. But the trend we're going to talk about here today is about multi-cloud. Over the last five, six years, we've seen a number of organizations putting their data in multiple clouds. That's a trend we are seeing grow year over year. But the number of organizations who are successful in their multi-cloud strategy is just one. What I'm trying to say is the number of organizations that fail when they think about a multi-cloud data platform strategy is nine out of 10. That's really shocking, and that's because of several challenges we see today in the industry, and we'll talk about some of those challenges. Most customers who have data in multiple clouds, they want to see a single view, single pane of glass for their data. They want centralized governance, centralized security, so irrespective of where the data is, they want to be able to access it securely and easily. With multiple copies of data, there's duplication, inconsistency, so they want fresh, consistent data. Also with data across multiple clouds, there's need for joining them to get faster time to insights, do advanced analytics, do all your machine learning and other applications you want to run on it. With data split across multiple clouds, there's also increased complexity, engineering overhead, and think about the cost of moving data with egress costs, cost of duplicating data in two different places. So these are some of the challenges we see with several of our multi-cloud customers. I'm just gonna hold a minute. Hello everyone, welcome. So what do we have here at Google Cloud? We have several tools and technologies for you to manage these data silos and do a lot more with the richer data sources we have here. So we're talk, going to talk about BigQuery Omni. BigQuery Omni provides you a single pane of glass to access your data, to query your data, do, to do data transformations when they're spread across multiple clouds. With Looker on top of this consolidated data, you get a robust semantic layer. You also get a single access point to query, to qu visualize, to explore your data sets here. And with all of this integrated data that you have here, it powers several rich data experiences, BI workflows and such, which we'll talk about again later in this presentation. So let me jump into BigQuery Omni. Several of you may have heard of BigQuery Omni and many of you may have tried it. BigQuery Omni is a fully managed serverless product. It is BigQuery Compute running on AWS and Azure. So the compute runs local to your storage, to your AWS S3 or your Azure blob storage. So with compute running local to the storage, you query the data in place. So as a data analyst, I'm not moving, I'm not replicating data, I'm querying in place, making it very simpler for me and cost effective as well. So that's the single pane of glass and I'll show some examples there. You also get consistent unified governance, which I mentioned was one of the challenges several of our customers face with this. 
We also have the ability to do cross-cloud analytics that is join your data sets together and get a lot of rich insights. We also recently announced a bi-directional data federation platform between Google Cloud and Salesforce Data Cloud, which we'll talk about, which enriches a lot of scenarios for customers who use both Salesforce and BigQuery or Google Cloud. So we talked about single pane of glass, and I want to show that here with an example. So you can see here, there's an example of a gaming company which has player data that's spread across multiple platforms. You can see there's data available in Amazon S3 storage. You have data in Azure Data Lake. We have BigQuery Managed Storage and Google, St Google Cloud Storage. These are four different data sources, all physically in four different locations. But with BigQuery UI, right? with BigQuery Omni, you're able to see all of them in a single pane of glass. You're able to query them as if they're all BigQuery tables. That's the power of BigQuery Omni, is querying in place through the connections you're set, setting up with these data sources and through the BigQuery compute that's running local to the storage here. You can also set fine-grained access controls, row-level, column-level security, and here you have an example of policy tags that we've set on uh, the names here. Now let's talk a little bit more about, you saw all of the data in one place, you're able to query it. What if I want to join my data sources and get a lot more with it? So we recently GA'd a feature called cross-cloud joins. With cross-cloud joins, it's a single SQL statement that allows you to join data across AWS, Azure, and GCP, all three clouds. How powerful is that? Like you're able to use one statement and combine data across all three clouds. And this is something that no other cl cloud data warehouse vendor today offers. What this does under the covers is that you have compute running in these clouds. They pre-process the data that you need for the join, bring them to GCP, and then you're able to join it. What this also does is reduces cost for you. It's very efficient and seamless because all of that is managed for you serverless by BigQuery Omni. Now this is great if I wanted to ad hoc analysis. As a data analyst, I want to just join A and B point in time. But what if I want to do periodic reporting, periodic dashboarding? I have data that's landing, that's changing consistently on other cloud. We have GA'd a new capability called cross-cloud materialized views. What cross-cloud materialized views allows you to do is it allows you to create a local materialized views on AWS of the data set that you want, that you need uh, available on GCP periodically. Through cross-cloud materialized view, which is a replica materialized view on GCP, automatically and incrementally data is brought over for the refresh interval you've set. In essence, it's actually changing data pipelines for you. You're getting a seamless cost-effective data pipeline Think of all the data engineering overhead you go through for setting up some of these pipelines and all of that is eliminated for you by MVs which are cross-cloud MVs which are um, both automatic and incremental. Now we talked a little bit about governance. BigQuery Omni integrates deeply with Datablex, our governance platform. So through the integration with Data Catalog, you're able to search, discover your data sets and explore them. Through glossary, you're also able to enrich your business metadata. We talked a little bit about fine-grained governance. You're able to get role-level access, column-level access, as well as data masking for BigQuery Omni tables. With BigQuery Omni support uh, with data lineage, you're able to access also the flow of your data, not just for your GCP data sets, but with the integration for your AWS and Azure data sets. And that's unified and consistent governance for you for data across all three cloud platforms. I mentioned about the recent uh, partnership announcement that Google Cloud and Salesforce uh, did for the bi-directional data federation platform. What this platform is, is about seamless integration between Salesforce Data Cloud and BigQuery that provides easy access, secure access to your data sets across both sites with zero ETL and zero ops. This is possible as a customer who has data in both in Salesforce Data Cloud and BigQuery, you can access your Salesforce data from BigQuery and vice versa with ease. And we'll talk about how this is uh, gonna happen in a bit. So imagine you're a customer who's in Salesforce Data Cloud and wants to access your BigQuery data. 
uh, you want to do some hyper-personalization, you want to enrich your customer profile data, bringing in data from uh, Google, Cloud, Google Cloud, Google Ads that you want to use there. By giving permissions to BigQuery tables and making the connection to BigQuery, seamlessly you're able to access data in Salesforce Data Cloud as external data lake objects. With all of this unified data sets available together, you can get faster insights, you can do smarter decisions. And the reverse scenario is also as easily possible. If you're in BigQuery and you want to access your data in Salesforce Data Cloud, you're able to do that seamlessly and with ease. And you're able to do that with several components that we recently talked about. So with BigQuery Omni, you're able to query the Salesforce Data Cloud data in place. Don't need to move the data. You're able to query it, access it. You're also able to join data if you want to do some ad hoc analysis. You want to bring data over to BigQuery, GCP for some of your use cases. You can use cross-cloud materialized views. What if I want to share this data with my organization? Through integration with Analytics Hub, you can share this data with the authorized users in your organization. And this unlocks several different use cases for our customers. And here are some of the main ones. Marketing analytics, if you want your Salesforce data cloud data and enrich it uh, for marketing campaigns, for marketing spend optimization, you want to look at your Google Ads data, this is a powerful tool there. If you want to do predictive analytics with Vertex AI, other AI ML scenarios, churn modeling, experimentation with all of this data in one place, that's possible as well. We'll talk later on about Looker and the BI workflows, but for any BI and advanced analytics needs too, once the data is unified and available, you can power all these scenarios. And as a proof point for our marketing analytics use case here, we have one of our uh, BigQuery Omni customers, Paramount, who's provided as a, a quote here to use that next. They are a customer who has data both on AWS and on GCP. Their streaming data lands regularly on AWS, and they want to bring it over to GCP periodically to combine with their ads data. So with capabilities like cross-cloud materialized view we talked about, with BigQuery Omni able to access data in AWS in place, they're able to do a lot of this more easily, providing uh, innovative tools as well as a unified data platform strategy for them. I am going to switch into a demo at this point just to quickly uh, talk about some of the capabilities here before we jump into Looker. Switch to the demo, please. Okay. So before I jump into the demo, I'll just give you a little bit of context and then I'll walk through what we are showing here. Um, imagine I'm a data analyst in a company, a rideshare company, who's looking at information, uh, all my data for my taxi rides, payments, all of that is available today on GCP. My company has acquired another company called Yellow Cabs. All of their information is available uh, in AWS. This is some, one of the most common use cases we see for BigQuery Omni is through M&A, through acquisitions, data is just available in different stacks that you need to unify here. So I'm gonna just quickly show some of the features here in action. So here, what you're seeing here is we are going into the AWS data set here. We are looking at yellow trips, and I'm going to show how um, this is available today. This is all the data that's in Amazon S3. You have five years worth of all of the ride share data that's available here. And by creating a connection to the AWS data source here, all of this is available as a BigQuery table. You can see all of the fields here. You have the table ID here. The location here is AWS US East. And I'm going to run a quick query to show you some of the uh, fields and data that's showing up here, right? And in all of this, I'm only querying the data in place. I'm not moving any data. All of this happens, and you can see within BigQuery, within GCP, you're able to access your AWS tables natively as if it's one single table. We talked about materialized views. Again, I'm able to create a local materialized view in AWS, and so this is a materialized view of the data for the yellow trips. That is a subset of the information I want. I specify the refresh interval, which is at the interval at which the data is automatically updated and brought over. And this source data is for this, is the yellow trips table that we saw here. And with cross-cloud materialized views, you can replicate it and you can uh, get data insights in GCP. 
Now I'm gonna quickly also talk about the cross cloud joins which we saw here. So in this example, I wanna combine my green trips data, my yellow caps data, and also want to combine with reference data such as vendor description and such, right? So here you can see um, I have green trips, yellow trips, and some of the reference data available in GCP. And all of that in one single SQL statement is gonna to come together uh, here. So if you give a moment for this query to run, Finish in about nine seconds. And here you can see this is a combined data set. This has data across all three sources. And I'll show you the execution graph as well so you can see where all of these different data sets are coming from. So you can see on the right, you can have information from the AWS yellow cabs. I have data from the green cabs and I'm also combining it with the reference table on GCP for it all to come together as one joint statement. The last feature which I didn't mention but I do want to talk about is that several customers may have AWS Google Catalog as their metadata source of truth. So if you have data, and you can see here in this example, I have a bunch of tables, and all of this table is federated from AWS Glue metadata. With Omni, we directly federate from AWS Glue, where you don't have to manually uh, specify the schema. Um, if you have all your metadata in Glue, you're able to get that, create a sim link, and if there are changes that happen in your metadata, they're automatically persisted and propagated over to GCP. So this is a very powerful feature for customers who have data in AWS and have metadata in AWS. They're able to bring it all together into GCP. So back to the presentation, please. Great. Uh, so to just to summarize all of the various things we talked about, our goal with Google Cloud is to provide a comprehensive and robust platform to do cross-cloud analytics. And we talked about several capabilities here with BigQuery Omni consolidating your data silos, providing you a single pane of glass, we talked about fine-grained access control and consistent governance. With capabilities like cross-cloud materialized views and joins, you're able to combine your data, do a lot more with it. And to talk about the second part of this cross-cloud data platform, I want to invite Adam back over to stage, and he'll talk about the Looker capabilities here. Thank you, Adam. Take it over. Thank you, Vidya. Disparate data creates real challenges when you're trying to get value out of your business intelligence applications. Sometimes it takes too long to unify data, or you have insights that are based on out of date information, or you have metrics that are inconsistent because they're calculated differently in separate systems. Looker can help with these problems. Looker is a complete business intelligence platform. It has modern BI experiences, end user self-service, an application development platform, and insights that can be integrated directly where end users work. At the core of Looker is the semantic model. In the semantic model, you m define what your organization's most important business metrics are, like revenue, customer lifetime value, or churn, and how that relates to other concepts in your business, like customers, orders, or events. Once you've done that modeling, all of your users, your applications, your AI models will be able to use that to drive insights and explore the data. Because the semantic model is so core to Looker, we have a robust set of lifecycle tools around it. There's a development environment so analysts can define metrics and create tests. There's lifecycle that allows you to verify them, push them to production, and to collaborate with other analysts as you're making changes to those metrics. This is also extensible. So if you as an organization already have a Git-based source control system, or you have a CI-CD development pipeline, Looker can be integrated with that, so it fits within your overall application development process. Another important part about Looker is its in-database architecture. Rather than extracting data from your data warehouse into the BI tool, Looker instead generates queries that run directly inside of the data warehouse. And this gives you a number of advantages. The first is that you leverage the power of your data warehouse to run multiple queries efficiently and to use features like BigQuery Omni. Also, you're not creating more copies of data. This helps with latency, so you're always working on up-to-date, most important information. It means you're not having extra costs for managing those copies as well. 
You can also use the built-in security of your data warehouse too. If you've defined granular role-based permissions or role-level security like you can in BigQuery, those are all honored throughout the Looker stack. And Looker can connect to over 50 different databases and data warehouses. So no matter where your data is, you're gonna be able to use it in Looker. We connect to many sources, but we've also done a lot to make sure that we're the best with BigQuery. And this means that we support natively BigQuery features like nested and repeated columns. And we have BigQuery specific query generation that handles things like partitions and time zones and pivots. So when we talk to customers, we hear several key reasons why they choose Looker for their business intelligence workflows. The first is that it's a complete BI offering. It doesn't matter whether you're doing centralized reporting where you have thousands of users accessing reports or having those metrics sent to their email inboxes every day, or you're doing more of an ad hoc use case where individuals are doing their own analysis as they go, maybe connecting to other data sources, Looker can handle the full spectrum of that. Second, it really is a trusted and open platform. Organizations have a heterogeneous environment across data sources, clouds, and tools, and Looker works with them all to unify and bring it together. We also have a number of extensibility points that makes it a true platform, so you can customize it and integrate it into applications you're building. Third, Looker is infused with intelligence. And we have a number of features built into Looker that run the gamut from relatively simple things like time series forecasting to a roadmap that has many generative AI capabilities that are coming to Looker. These Gen AI capabilities uh, help with productivity, for example, with LookML Assistant, as users are building that semantic model, they can get help writing those metrics so they don't spend as much time focusing on the language and instead can focus on understanding their business. But we're also using generative AI to expand who can get value from analytics. With conversational queries in Looker, anyone can ask a question in plain language and get a result in the form of a chart. We know that accuracy is crucial for the adoptance of generative AI, and Looker's semantic model is an important enabler of that. We can take context from your semantic model and use that in generative AI use cases to improve accuracy to the questions that are asked. Today's session is about cross-cloud analytics, so we're mostly gonna focus on that trusted and open part of the Looker platform. But we have a number of capabilities across these pillars and many things in the roadmap. And we'll tell you at the end where you can learn more in another Looker session too. To serve all users, we need to be able to access all of their data. In many cases, it's possible to centralize that and bring it into your data warehouse or to use features like BigQuery Omni so you can federate across multiple sources. But there are always gonna be situations where you can't do that. Maybe it's a use case for just a few users, or maybe it's data that's temporary in nature and it doesn't justify you bringing it into the data warehouse. For these ad hoc use cases, Looker Studio is a tool that's easy for any business user to connect to data and do an analysis in just minutes. With 800 plus sources, including spreadsheets, CSVs, and popular business applications, it's possible to connect to, to virtually any data. We also have the Looker Studio Community Connector Framework, which allows you to write a JavaScript-based connector to any data source you have. It could be an internal application or a specialized data store, and have that be able to be analyzed in inside of Looker Studio. Looker Studio is a standalone offering today, but we're also bringing it into the Looker platform so that users inside Looker can do studio analysis, use those 800 plus data sources directly within that overall Looker platform. So we already talked about how the Looker semantic model makes your organization more efficient by centralizing these metrics. Now with these metrics in place, you can multiply your efficiency if they're used everywhere. But just as your data exists across clouds, your analytical workflows uh, exist across many clouds too. Now with the Looker semantic layer, it's accessible in third-party BI and analytics tools as well. Directly from the user interfaces of these other tools and using familiar uh, uh, interfaces that users use day to day, they can explore Looker metrics and do analyses visually. We already have support for Google Sheets, Tableau, Power BI, and ThoughtSpot. 
Later this year, we're also gonna be adding support for Excel. This is also an open ecosystem. All of these integrations are built on top of the Looker SQL interface. With the Looker SQL interface, from any application or tool uh, that you build or use that can generate SQL, that can run queries against the Looker semantic model using those consistent metric definitions and bringing the results into those tools. Also, this still uses Looker's in-database architecture. So it's generating queries that are running inside your data warehouse, meaning that you're using the up-to-date data, consistent security, and leveraging all of that power in the data warehouse too. If we're gonna reach the broadest population of users with analytics, we need to be in the apps that they're already using or the workflows that are already happening. This is especially true in frontline scenarios like retail operations. In these cases, users may not have working with data and analyzing it as their day job, but nonetheless, they still need to use metrics to make business decisions in their day to day. Looker has a whole spectrum of embedding options, some very simple and some that allow you to get a lot of flexibility. On the simplest end, we have private labeling. You can use Looker's entire user experience as a reporting portal for your users, customized with your brand. Very simple to do. If you want more flexibility, embedding allows you to take an individual Looker dashboard and put that inside of your application or your website. You can leverage the existing user authentication you have in your app, and you can embed more than just dashboards. You can embed Looker's entire data exploration experience. You have control over what users are gonna be able to do. Can they just view dashboards? Can they save their own queries? Can they create email subscriptions? Can they create whole dashboards? It's up to you. And again, that can be customized to match your app's look and feel. To go even further, if you want more flexibility, we have Looker components. These are components that represent individual visuals or filters. They have a JavaScript API, so you can control them dynamically, and an eventing model so they can respond to changes. For example, you can update your app's navigation or display contextual information based on what a user is, is filtering or querying with the components. Finally, if you want to build your entire experience the way you want, you can still take advantage of Looker. The Looker API lets you enumerate the metrics inside the model. You can generate queries uh, against any of the underlying data sources, set up email subscriptions or alerts while retaining the experience that you want. Just like Looker can embed into applications, we can also integrate with existing business apps. And this gives a seamless transition for users between analyzing data and taking action. Imagine a marketing activation use case. You might have a, uh, an offer that you want to give to a segment of your existing customers. The marketing analyst, through Looker's Explore experience, can go in and define that segment. They can use all of the power of the data in the semantic model to do it. Maybe some things about the customer demographics, some things about the user's behavior in the product or activity they've done on the website. And once they've found that segment, then they want to go create, for example, a Salesforce campaign to take action on that but they don't need to extract the data from Looker and then go and re-import it into Salesforce. With Looker Actions, there's one click they can take in the Looker Explorer that will automatically send that data to Salesforce and create the campaign. You could do that with Salesforce, you could do that with Twilio to send an email or a text message. And also, Looker Actions is extensible with an API. If you have your own service uh, or endpoint that can receive data, you can integrate that with Looker Actions too, so end users can send data to whatever service you want them to be able to. Maybe the most foundational choice across all of the cross-cloud capabilities is where you choose to host your business intelligence application. And Looker provides you many choices there too. Looker Google Cloud Core is our fully managed SaaS offering that is built on Google infrastructure uh, and is deeply integrated with Google Cloud Platform capabilities. It has advanced security features like private IP, so that you can bring, bring your data close to your application in a secure perimeter to provide defense, defense in depth. With cloud audit logging, you can take activity from Looker and have that available to be managed centrally. You can also manage instance lifecycle for Looker through the Cloud Console, through the SDK, through Terraform. 
Many of our customers choose to use Google Cloud Core for Looker, regardless of where their data is or where their applications are. And this is because latency across clouds and the payload results for business intelligence workloads tend to be small and short. But we know that there are going to be situations where some customers need to deploy in other clouds. And for that reason, we have our fully managed SaaS offering also available on AWS and on Azure. Furthermore, there are some customers that will have unique regulatory or contractual requirements that means that they need to run it on their own infrastructure. You can do that too. The Looker application can be self-hosted on your infrastructure. While there are some differences in terms of how you configure and how you manage across these different deployment options, there's consistency in the core Looker concepts, the experiences, and the APIs. And so this means that whether you chose one option or the other, or maybe you even need to mix and match in your complex environment, you can simplify your management and operations. As one proof point, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about Teeds. They're a global scale advertising platform with an extremely high amount of growth and complexity in terms of geogra geography and location of data. They've used Looker and BigQuery together to streamline their management and achieve their growth without ballooning complexity. They're just one example of where cross-cloud use cases where you can federate across multiple sources and you have a, a business intelligence tool that lets you unify everything together can be so powerful. So I'd like to switch now to the demo and show a little bit of this in action. So for this demo, let's imagine that we work for a manufacturer. We have data all over the place here. We have customer data in Salesforce that has been replicated into BigQuery. We have manufacturing transactional data that's in Azure. We have high-level aggregated sales data that's in AWS. So in Looker, I have defined a semantic model that combines all of those different data sources together. And I built this dashboard on top of it so that as a user, I don't need to query many different places, it's all in one spot. On the left-hand side, there are a few tiles that have overall order information from, uh, uh, from Salesforce. Here you can see that I have it trended over time. I'm even using Looker's built-in forecasting capability to see how that's gonna change. As I scroll down here, I can see that I have it broken out by country. And again, this is now joining in to a different cloud to return these results. And down at the bottom here, I can even see a view of my latest orders. Now this is aggregate information from AWS, but if I drill down, we're gonna show the bill of materials, the details for those orders, and this is coming from Azure, from the manufacturing system. Now, Looker is not just about static dashboards. The great thing about Looker, and this is enabled by the semantic model, is that as a user, if I want to explore more, I can. So I'll click the Explore button here. And that'll bring me into the data exploration experience. On the left-hand side, I can see as an end user all of the different concepts from the semantic model. I have my customers, I have my orders, I have the line items there. I don't need to know which cloud they're in or how they're related. Looker just lets me easily analyze based on that data. So in this case, I'm gonna bring in the item quantity and the list price, and I'll run that query again. And here I can see in just a few seconds I get back um, an updated uh, set of results for those four line items. It brought in all that context from what I was analyzing before, so it has the same filters. I didn't have to recreate those. Now let's look at how this is happening uh, behind the scenes. I can switch to the SQL tab, and this will show the SQL that gets generated for this. And you can see that that one simple visual exploration actually crossed three different clouds. I had the customer information from BigQuery here, I joined the orders table in AWS, and the line item table in Azure, and BigQuery Omni brought it all together. The Looker Semantic model made it easier for the end user to just pick and choose fields, and it was still relatively performant in terms of bringing those results back. So this is a great example of how if you have BigQuery and Looker together, you can federate across multiple data sources and unify it for your end users. Switching back to the Presentation, please. So I, I'd, I'd like to, to, to close by, by saying a couple of things. You know, first of all, thank you for, for joining. This is the first breakout session of Next. 
Uh, I think it's great to be able to see the uh, power of what you can do with cross-cloud analytics with both BigQuery and Looker. There are some other sessions that I think are gonna be especially relevant if you're interested in this one. Um, the, the first one, 201, is the, the spotlight session for Looker. We'll cover all the innovations with Gen AI across the different experiences. We also have a session on embedded analytics for how you can bring Looker into your own applications. And on the BigQuery side, tomorrow, there's a what's new session that will cover the full breadth of the BigQuery platform and another drill down on a fully managed lake house uh, with, with, with BigQuery as well. Great, well, I think we're out of time and I know we're on a, a short schedule here. So thank you all for joining. Enjoy the rest of the day.